text that we've seen before, where ball getting can be disastrous because there's all these weird singletons and no way to search for cards. Arthur's list is a little bit more stable, has access to cards like Intuition and, you know, Brainstorm, for goodness sake. It can help alleviate some of the problems with Mulligans. That said, it's still bad for him. Got a grindstone to start here from Reynolds. Senator does have a copy of Force of Will and a blue card in his hand. The question is, do you want to counter this or do you want to save it for something else? Looks like he's going to save it for something else. Price yep. of Progress to draw. We didn't even, we didn't even mention it. Here's a Goblin Guide. Price of Progress is actually pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, Arthur's mana base is really heavily built around artifact lands and two mana lands. So mm -hmm. Price of Progress is going to be a good tool for Andrew. Red Elemental Blast, the card that was revealed from the Goblin Guide. So now Schneider has to contend with that for some of his blue cards. There's a Volcanic Island. Just going to pass the turn back over to Schneider. He's going to untap that Goblin Guide. Take a draw here. It's a Scalding Tarn. And critical second land here. Andrew's been running pretty hot so far with some uh -oh. of these draw steps. How about another Goblin Guide? This may be Force of Will worthy. Might want to battle back. I guess you really can't when you know your opponent has a red blast. So take one and take care of a goblin guide. And now come across for two. Another copy of Grindstone. That one doesn't matter too much. Redundant copy is not so helpful. Yeah, Andrew's got to be thrilled that that's Arthur's draw step next turn. Yeah, I think he's got to like the way this game's going. Right there with you. And you can pass the turn back, no land. And this is a critical piece of all of this, you know. You see Arthur, he's trying to set up Grindstone plus Painter Servant. You see Chain Lightning in Andrew's hand. These can go to the head if the game goes down that way, and they provide disruption in the event that Arthur is able to add one of his combo pieces. So now you're going to record the cards over there that he's seen with the Goblin Guy before taking a draw here. Another Scalding Darn, so a couple of lands are certainly a good spot to be in. He knows his Brainstorm is likely to get countered here because of the Red Elemental Blast that Reynolds has. He's going to play Scalding Tarn to start. Get in for two here. The trigger reveals a scudding turn for Reynolds. He's going to go down to 13 now. And yeah, this is an interesting spot here because Andrew knows that, you know, Red Elemental Blast will likely happen on the Brainstorm, and therefore he's saving it for Force of Will. Now, that Force of Will can also get Red Blast in theory, but if Arthur is going to try to do anything, it may involve tapping out, so may, Andrew may be able to pick a better spot here. Scalding turn the land that Reynolds is going to play before passing the turn back over to Schneider. He's just going to untap that Goblin Guide and keep rolling with that. Going to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn here and go down to 19, Will Schneider. And now that Andrew has picked up a black, a backup blue card, you may see him try to fire off this Brainstorm. If he gets hit with a Red Elemental Blast, that's not ideal, but he can still cast Force of Will somewhere down the line. Kind of like probing, too, just to get some info. It looks like he's going to go with Brainstorm. As you mentioned, getting this countered, it's fine, but this is going to resolve here. So an island, a bolt, and a force. Well, I think you got to be thrilled that that resolved. Oh, that's great, yeah. I mean, and Andrew's got, he can put back a land and one of his redundant blue cards, keep a bunch of bolts in his hand, and potentially end this game very quickly. And Price of Progress is going to deal at least four here as well. Yeah. I promise Andrew I would just get rid of one of these blue cards, I think, because you still have Force of Will backup, and the all the red spells are so good here. Two cards on top. Resolve the brainstorm. Now it's time to go probing. Snyder going to go down to 17. Life total does not really matter at all for him here. So that's nice. He said, I want to see the grip. Will you let me? You will. Flusterstorm, grindstone, an ancient tomb, and a red blast. Really good for Andrew to know about the flusterstorm here. So that'll inform some of the sequencing with his burn spells. Mm-hmm. Take a look at your so make sure he knows exactly what that does. Mm -hmm. Three to activate. They're the same color. You keep right on going. Here's a Goblin Guide attack. Trigger. There's an intuition. So now Arthur can slowly couple together the combo here by intuitioning for Painter Servant, but that may be nowhere near fast enough given the quality of Andrew's draw. You see the chain, the bolt, the price. She just can close it out pretty quick. Reynolds actually going to draw the intuition. He could have shuffled it away with the Tarn. Going to choose not to here. I wonder if he's going to play the Ancient Tomb. It looks like he's going to 
looks like he is. So now pop is good for six and potentially more. At least seven, right? Because he has a sack the tarn, yeah. even if he wants to go get a basic. Now, Arthur does have Flusterstorm to protect him from all of this, but he will have to certainly use it here. See, Arthur looks like he wants to cast the Intuition now, maybe for Painter's Servants. Just gonna pass the turn back. Snyder gonna untap. Rockin' steady with the Goblin guy, gonna play an island. Same verse. There's a Red Blast. Rounds goes down to nine. Mm -hmm. Now it's all about when you cast these. Gonna sacrifice here a flooded strand. Rounds gonna go down to eight. I think Andrew may be setting this up so that he can press a progress and Arthur can't cast any spells in response and the Fluster Storm won't counter it. He'll be able to he'll be able to pay. Right. Yeah. I mean, if Arthur can add more spells to the stack in response, then the Flusher Swarm will be for more, but I'm not sure if Arthur can do it. His hand's just the Red Elemental Blast, the Grindstone, uh, and presumably he's getting Painter Servants here with this intuition, which means his hand may be completely uncastable on his own upkeep, and the price of progress may resolve as a result. Three manas. It's intuition time. Do you make a move here? I don't think so. You know about the red blast, and I think that you can invalidate that card for the remainder of the game here. I think I'm right there with you. No reason to actually make any movement, basically, until your opponent does. I mean, and I think the way that Andrew has this set up is that Price of Progress inside of Arthur's upkeep is just lethal. You see, he's just waiting, picking a spot here, consulting his hand, the two forces. The pop, the bolts, and the chain. And he says, that's fine. Search your deck. And you see Arthur's going to get three Painter Servants and turn them down. And if this, is the, if this is the line that Andrew has selected, this is some really impressive magic. Because he knows that Arthur can't initiate another spell. Mm-hmm. And there are your three copies of Painter Servant. Two of those go to the bin, one of them go to the grip as soon as Reynolds is done shuffling here with those Force of Squirrel sleeves. And even if Arthur is somehow able to survive the price of progress, he still needs to handle the two bolts in hand and win the game in time. Yeah. Maybe asking just too much right now. And that's a hand that can't initiate anything on the upkeep. It's a red blast he can't cast. It's a flush storm that's only for two. Now, red blast is a text where you can't cast it, right? Correct. Yeah. If it's, it got the, it's got the hiccup. If it was pyroblast, yeah. he could cast it on something and then flush storm for three. But since it's red blast, I don't think he can do it. And you see Andrew stopping in the upkeep right now. It looks like it's time to go to the dome. And he says, let's make it go pop. Price of progress. Two damage for each non-basic each player's controls. Patrick, it's symmetrical. This is great magic you are seeing from Andrew yep. Snyder. This is great magic. Patience. That's all it is. He just realizes the contents of the hand and, and knows that this Fluster Storm does not provide any defense. Looking at a hand of a red blast, he can't cast on anything here. Two main phase cards. And the Splusher Storm with two mana left over. You see, Reynolds is actually kind of consulting his hand, saying, I should be able to get out of this, right? There's yeah, got to yeah. be something I can do. Yeah, I mean, the minute that he announces Fluster Storm, the Storm Trigger goes on the stack. So we can't do anything like Fluster Storm and then Red Blast something. Like, that doesn't work. Yeah. And he will cast Fluster Storm. He says, Storm counts two. And he says, I'll pay it. And that's going to do it. Andrew Snyder going to win game number one in very, very impressive fashion here, based off of a Goblin Guide. Some timely cantrips and a well-played price of progress. You want to know why this guy's won two opens and is one game away from winning a third one with this deck? The hair. Yeah. Well, the hair is not hurting. Yeah. Can't, hurt. can't hurt. I was referring to the quality of play. Ah, that too. The hair is nice. Right there with you. Premium giveaway. You got the question. 
I've got the rules. 12 months. Hashtag SCG Premium at SCG Live. Remember, all contests here with Star City Games are with only Star City Games and not with Twitch. And we'll announce the winner at the conclusion of this final match between Schneider and Reynolds. Fire away. The SCG Open Series taking a break next weekend yep. as Star City Games host states. The following weekend, I will be doing commentary with Matthias Hunt. Name the location. And if you can, hashtag SCG Premium. Again, we will select one winner at the conclusion of our final round. It's about accuracy, not speed. So just make sure you do get the question right of where we'll be with Patrick and Matthias a couple weeks from now. I'm on break. Mm -hmm. Two weeks in a row. That's nice. Yes. And then working like 700 in a row. Right, exactly. But that's cool. That's cool, too. I don't How, mind. Do you ever occasionally look at the quarter four schedule and go, like, <laughs> this is the number of dates in a row. Well, I know exactly how the quarter four schedule works. I have three weeks off in September and then no more weeks off for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So, kind of. Right. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I mean, we're going to a bunch of great cities. Right. It'll and, be fun. Yeah. It'll be fun. Don't get me wrong. In September, I'll have my feet up for three weeks. I, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do after, like, day 10. I'm just going to be, like, shaking and why am I not in an airplane and what am I supposed to be doing? You should come out to San Diego. Yeah, it's not going to happen. But we will do... We'll take a look at the match. <laughs> all right. Want me to hang out with you? Yeah. I'm going to hang out with you all of October, November, and December. But with no pressure to talk about magic or anything. We can just, we can go to SeaWorld or go to a Padres game. It'd be totally fun. You know what? I think I might be in. We'll talk about it. I think we'll I might be in. It. it could be fun. Reynolds has gotten ensnaring bridge, two Tormont scripts, two Chain of Vapors, three Misdirection, three Surgical Extractions, a Swan Song, and three copies of Lawan, Cephalon Empress. What do you like? Uh, three copies of Misdirection are pretty good here. The fight is over Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning to a lesser degree. Not only is Misdirection another counter spell, but you can actually use it to take off some of Andrew's pressure. Uh, I think you may see the copy of Ensnaring Bridge come in, although Andrew can win just with this burn spell. Ensnaring Bridge may buy Arthur a little bit of time if things break the right way. And that about does it from my end. Not really any meaningful permanence. Matchup's a little too slow for Luan, and Schneider's got all sorts of bolts. But... I like the misdirections, and I like the ensnaring bridge. Other side, you got two Sulfuric Vortex, two Flusterstorm, with Price of Progress. We saw how good that was the first game. Two Pyroblasts, three, excuse me, two Smelts, three Surgicals, and then three Lava Spikes. Are we going upstairs again? No, we are not. And we talked so much about Andrew switching game plans to a burn deck. This is the type of matchup where he wants to switch into kind of a more classic rug tempo deck. You're going to see him probably remove some amount of his burn, although Lightning Bolts are still viable cards against Arthur because he's trying to win with Painter Servant and with Goblin Welder, but I think you're going to see cards like Surgical Goal Extraction, Smell, and the Pyroblast, and the Flusterstorms coming as well. Maybe the extra price of progress. It's hard for him to make room for all the stuff because the Lightning Bolts are live, the Counter Spells are live, the Cantrips are live. He can only take out so many creatures, so I don't know where he's going to find room for all the stuff, but he's got a lot of powerful cards in the sideboard for this matchup. Seems like Chain Lightning and Fork Bolt may have to go. Yeah, the Sorceries are a lot less impactful than the instants are because, of course, Andrew has a wider range of being able to respond to Arthur trying to go off with Lightning Bolt instead of Chain Lightning. Let's we'll see how both players do after sideboard here again. Andrew Snyder up a game here in the finals. The eighth seed barely squeaked in, but he is making the most of his opportunity here in the elimination rounds. One win away from winning another Legacy Open with Blue Red Delver. Winning three matches on the draw is no small feat in Legacy. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of that. Well. Uh, I think, I think I remember. Par Paranistrum. Yeah, yeah, last, last week. week in Cincinnati yeah. was also the eighth seed. I guess the Masters can get it done. Yeah. That's for sure. If you are a Master, you can get it done. Otherwise, forget about it. Death and Taxes taking down Cincinnati last weekend. We had big-time change of pace this weekend. Yeah. We have volcanic islands everywhere. Well, it's mostly a commentary, I think, on Andrew Schneider than the objective quality of Blue Red Delver. Yeah. It's funny, I mean, if you follow the Open Series quite a bit, if you sit down against the Legacy Tournament, you know he's playing. Absolutely. Doesn't mean you can stop him. It's the same way with Joel said, honestly. You know he's on Del you know he's on Miracles, excuse me. Chances are Reels on Delver. But that's what Legacy kind of is. It's a format where if you know your deck, you get a huge edge. And Andrew escaped counterbalance in the top eight. I asked him what happened, and he said, oh, no, but that's not a matchup I like playing. Yeah. So he knew, he knew that was not one that was terrible for him, but Andrew was able to dig it out. Both players are going to draw these openers. You saw each Mulligan last game. Mulligan certainly favors Schneider here. Let's see what Reynolds is able to put together this game, however. Arthur needs pretty specific hands. It, it, this is a tough matchup, I feel like, for him. Doesn't seem like the easiest. After watching game one play out, it doesn't seem like the easiest. Yeah. Don't know if they're all going to play that way. You could argue that things actually get worse for Reynolds now. 
when your opponent has access to Smelt and Snapcaster Mage? Smelt? Are you yeah. Kidding? This guy came ready. Yep, apparently. Snyder giving his hand a long look. It looks like he's happy enough with his seven, as Brennos is going to mulligan down to six here again. States next weekend, being held by Star City Games. Big tournament. Spring States should be fun. First states that we've ever held all over the country. Get some sweet Cyclops play mats and everything else along with that. You're definitely going to find out more about that. StarCityGames.com. Find the location near you. I'm looking forward to that. You know, I, I keep thinking to myself, nah, I'm just going to stay home. I, I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I know who I am. IQ's going on this weekend still. Also, yeah. a big one down in San Diego. Yep. Yeah. San Diego Cards and Comics. Very nice store. I know I'm playing. Mm -hmm. For better or worse. I can't stay away. You get so few chances. I know. Life magic is so good. Yeah, it is. And now, oof, now they're mulligan here for Reynolds. Things are looking rather grim for him. It's going to be really hard for him to assemble a five card hand that can win through all these counter spells and smelts and bolts. And it's, it's asking a lot. You know, Blue Red Delver is naturally pretty good against combo decks. You have a fast clock, you have Force of Wills and some Spell Pierces. When your other modes of interaction are also live, the matchups become very favorable. And Andrew's fortunate here to run into a deck that's trying to go off with artifacts and three toughest creatures. <laughs> yeah. So all forms of disruption are live. It's almost like he's got no bad draws in his deck. Yeah. What's his worst spell? I don't yes. know. I guess probably Snapcaster Mage. I don't know. If that's the worst card in your deck, your deck is pretty good. Spell Pierce? Yeah. I mean, they were talking some, still some mighty fine cards. Great first, going to get underway, and here's the Sensei's Divine Top. Try to smooth out the draws here for Reynolds. Any card that can help him try to cobble together a reasonably playable five-card hand, Sensei's Divine Top is up to the task. Snyder with a Volcanic Island off that Scalding Tarn. He's in 19, but again, his life total does not matter very much here in this match. And this is a Delver of Secrets. Great opening. He wants to get the beatdowns early and often. Not a great card in this matchup because of all the blast effects, but could certainly be good enough, especially wow. when your opponent mulligans to five. Yeah, exactly. On a five-card hand, these threats are going to be good. Time to spin the top. And since the red blasts are live in other respects, you know, Andrew has counter spells. It's not like the end of the world for him to trade a red blast here for a Delver of Secrets. That's true. Top is spun. Card coming. It's an ancient tomb. Somebody wants to resolve something. He's got a painter servant, it looks like. And a little wand. I like oh, it. Oh, oh I like it. Shut you out. I was dubious about the little wand in this matchup because of so many bolts in Andrew's deck. But again, this is a high upside card. Might help him steal this game. Painter servant coming. You got to believe it's going to be on blue, but we will get confirmation for you guys at home. Snyder going to untap. And it is on blue. There's a Gataxian probe. Spin it. And Sectalibration showing up to the party. Probe to the grip. Probe wants to see what's going on. You're going to see the little wand. <laughs> Cephalid Emperor and a skull. Oh, boy. Wow. The combo. You can cast it next turn. Yes. He's going to take a look. So will we. What exactly do you do? You ridiculous Cephalid? It's really good against Merfolk. And it's really good when Painter's Servant is setting everything to blue. I wonder how many times we locked him out of that. You got that combo, by the way? That's a combo. It's a combo. L -L -A -W -A -N. It is a combo. Yes, it is. So now Andrew scopes out the action. There's our Cephalid Legend. Comes to play. Return all blue creatures your opponent's control. And your opponents can't play blue creature spells, but all the fun looks like it may be over here as Lightning Bolt takes care of Painter Servant. I suppose the wand's still fine to cast. So this is fine. He's, yeah. got, he's got Delver Secrets in play. He's missing his second land drop. Lawan will play. So we're going to count the damage here. Three, four, five. I mean, that hand is not really that well suited to fight Lawan. It's all cantrips. I mean, maybe Andrew was able to find a removal spell in a land. Yeah. Draw it's, a card. It's unfair to call Lawan Beatdown's plan B, because I'm pretty sure it's plan F, <laughs> but it's at least something. 
It's a plan. And it, you know, in the meantime, while Andrew spends time cantripping to try to find an answer to the salon, that's an opportunity for Arthur to spin to mining top and find other things to do. So I was uh, skeptical of Luan when we were sideboarding, but this is going to be a good spot for it. All we're looking for is answers here. That's a little it. bit of time. Just a little bit of time. It's going to be a basic island that's going around simply because of what happened in the last game in Price of Progress. Do not want to have that happen again. And it's Cephalid time, I think. He's going to take two to do it off the ancient two. But there is Lawan. Pick it up. Yeah, take a look. Mm -hmm. You pick that Delver right up, Mr. Sly. Oh, yeah. That's blue. Still is blue. That goes to the group. You can't play it. If it said you can't play blue spells, that'd be absurd, but... We'd probably see a lot more of it in Legacy if it said you can't play blue spells. Yeah. So the one, yeah, it should be in play. There it is. All right, Andrew Snyder takes a draw. Lightning bolt. Want, want. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna ponder first. See if he can find a land. Hit one and two. And we're not shuffling, I don't think. I think we're keeping an island here and yeah. pondering again. Uh, of course, Andrew would prefer to just have another volcanic this turn, but this will this will this is fine. Yeah. There's your island. There's your second ponder. You can set up Delver for future turns here. Yeah. Also find a third land. There is a third land in Misty Rainforest. Good clean living. Yeah, this is really good for Andrew. So he's going to take the Misty from the Ponder. Just going to pass the turn back, hoping nothing terrible happens here as Reynolds is already at 12. Reynolds will draw a card. This looks like a land is making space for one. Mm -hmm. There's a Tarn. Mm. Attack for two. <laughs> yep. There's a first for everything here on SCG mm. Live. I think I've seen a little one in play No, before. no way. The Merfolk mirror used to be really popular, or Merfolk in general. Lawan was the card to beat Merfolk. Many moons ago. Yeah. I'm not saying this was recent, but I believe this has happened. You gotta believe if you're Andrew, that all you need to do is get some forward momentum. Arthur's already at 12. He has only a very tenuous grip in this game. Shouldn't be too hard to break it up. Chain lightning the draw. That's going over there. Andrew has three brainstorms in his hand. My goodness. We're gonna, we're gonna draw a card with top here. Okay. Gonna pay. Gonna cast Flusterstorm. Well, we can pay for that. Yeah, this is a Flusterstorm for two again, so. I'd imagine that he wants to. Seems reasonable. I mean, what's Andrew's alternative here is not pay, play Lightning Bolt and Delver of Secrets. That's not a shabby turn. I guess it's I guess it's open for debate. Yeah, I think I'd still just be okay. I don't want to waste my card. Like Lightning Bolt actually has some value against Painter Servant. Yeah, no. So. I, I, overall, I agree. It's it's at least worth considering. But I, I do agree with you ultimately. Yeah, sacrifice Misty. Sorry, I'm giving this some real thought here before he makes that play. He knows that he can go get Volcanic. He's just got to be worried that he's walking into some sort of trap. Yeah. He says, all right, I'll pay the Fluster Storm. Like, does Arthur just want me to tap out for some reason? Mm-hmm. Because that's what that play is a representation of. But it's just unlikely that Arthur's able to win the game from here, so. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly worth thinking about. Yeah. That's for sure. No no need to rush it. You know, sacrifice the Scalding Tarns. He's going to lose his top now. <laughs> he's without any shuffling effects, but I still feel like the top is... For a minute, oh, I think, yeah, I was with you. Oh, you. Arthur, I think you want to land. Listen, I know you're playing around price of progress, but, <laughs> yeah. but I want to go get a land here. Gotta go get a basic mountain. We'll see what the draw is going to be here again because he did shuffle away his top. If so you're just at the mercy of the top of his deck now. If you're in Andrew's seat right now, you're just thinking to yourself, just get out of this turn. Look how good his hand is. And Arthur's already at 11. You just got to get out of this turn. Arthur with one card, no top. Yeah. Take a draw, though. 
see what he can find. You see the tomb. So, okay, he may have picked up a copy, I think, of Force of Will. Uh, I think it's Transmuted Artifact. Okay. Which he cannot cast. For numerous reasons, right? Well, he has a Great Furnace. Oh, so I he missed could, it. He I could upgrade the Great Furnace, but he's missing double blue, so. All right, it's past turn back. Over to Snyder. Take a draw. Misty. Delver. Pass it back. With three Brainstorms, a Snapcaster, and a Bolt. Final draws. There is a Transmitter Artifact in the grip. There's a Brainstorm. Make sure that this thing flips. Hit one. Force. Two. Goblin Guide. Three. Spell Pierce. You feel like that's the type of brainstorm that's locking up this trophy. Mm -hmm. A lot of action here for Andrew. Trigger, brainstorm, flip into Exetal Aberration. Snyder at 14, Reynolds about to go down to 8, maybe even less than that. See the Goblin Guide. He says, all right, let's put you down to 8 this way. Yeah, I think that Andrew wants to have the ability to cast Lightning Bolt and Snapcaster Lightning Bolt. In case something hairy goes on in Arthur's turn. And of course, those cards are quite good at just killing Arthur as well. So, no reason to play the Goblin Guide in that spot. Well, Tan, he has a red blast of Force Will and a Transmit Artifact. He's going to cast Snapcaster Mage. He says, Is this okay? He says, Not just yet. I think I want to red blast that. Might have a little fight over the Snapcaster Mage. And there is your red blast. I'm going to target the Delver. Yeah. And he says, how about a Force of Will? I want to keep my Delver. Just trying to finish out this game. Mm-hmm. He knows he's basically got it wrapped up. Reynolds says, I'm going to Force of Will using my Transmute Artifact that I can't cast. So Snyder says, all right, you take one. You go down to seven. There goes my Delver. But that's okay. I'm going to bolt you. You're going to go down to four. We've got a Goblin Guy. we got a Lightning Bolt. Mm-hmm. He's got a myriad of ways to get it done. Going to show the bolt. Untap and an extension of the hand. Andrew Snyder with a blue-red Delver does it again. Un His third legacy open win, this time in Knoxville. Unbelievable. Game two, of course, a cakewalk, in part because Arthur Mulligan to five never really got anything going. But that first game, uh, setting up that price of progress was just some great magic from Andrew. Well-deserved three-time legacy open champion. Very impressive stuff. A masterful display yet again with Blue Red Delver. This is the deck for him. He's having a blast with it. And again, another trophy.